Well, we were talking a bit about schadenfreude the other day, Bill, and uh, Jay Feaster seems to be indulging in a little bit of that. Uh, the former Flames GM uh, tweeted out, Yeah, baby, you can put it in the lost column Oilers. Entire time I was in Calgary, all I heard was how far ahead they were of the Flames. Uh, is that kind of out of line, or is he just having a little bit of fun there? No, that's out of line. Yeah. That's not fun. Where is Jay? Last Jay Feaster never played a game of hockey in his life. Where is Jay Feaster right now, by the way? Because he was on. He's in Tampa. He's he a, was tur. He was tur fairly quickly when yeah. when Brian Burke came in there. One of those things that, and I'm getting a little off topic. Hey, the story is very simple. If you want to bear with me, and I'll make yeah. it the Reader's Digest version. One of the big trades that we were unable to make was a Christmas deadline deal. I think in '01. And Rick Dudley, who is one of my favorite general managers, and he knows his business as well as anyone, called me and said, uh, I'm going to move the Cavalier. He doesn't get along with Tortorella. I thought, oh, boy. Anyway, he wanted four players. And we decided upon the four players. We kept going down the road. Nobody in Toronto knew that we were in it. They were writing San Jose Sharks, all their favorites. Eh? And so finally, on the Friday before the Christmas trade deadline, which was always Saturday at 4 o'clock or something like that. We had a deal. And it included uh, uh, Daniel Markov, uh, Nick Antropov, uh, the big right winger that played with Sundin, and a first-round pick. Uh, Markov may have been sub, Cavalry may have been sub for Markov. I think he was. So they were getting four players that could play on their team in a first-round pick, which would have been Brad Boyce. If they picked the same player. And Brad Boys has played for 10 or 12 years in the league, so they got a pretty good guy. So uh, Rick Dudley said to me, he said, Bill, I have to take it to my owner and his owner's representative. So he didn't call me Friday afternoon. Uh, I said to Pat, that's strange, Dudley. So I didn't bother him. Finally, Saturday morning, Dud's called. He said, Bill, I'm having trouble with my owner and my assistant general manager has turned against me. And at that point, Mr. Feaster was advised to move down the hall and never show his face <laughs> in the lightning office again. And so he did. And three months later, Dudley was fired, and they went down to the office, and there he was playing his banjo. And they brought him back to the hockey office as the general manager. That's how Jay Feaster became the general manager of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and of course, they fired Dudley. Mm -hmm. So it was, and, and it was all over the Le Cavalier deal. It was never made. And coincidentally, Le Cavalier was a healthy scratch the other day for Philadelphia. Who's oh, now, yeah, who's say, now suffering the sins of that stupid contract that they took, right? Yeah. Did they not have a chance to buy him out? Because I thought they, they bought out Bruce Gallup. Did they not have a chance to buy him out with that deal? Because he would have I been... Think, I think they signed him. Now, what year was he drafted? But I think he was... Close to a 35-year-old when they sign him, so they can't buy him out. I thought this was that occasion when you, you, had, the, you had the two buyouts. compliance buyouts, and he would have been one of those, I think there's another player. Well, one, compliance of those, buyout could have been one of those two guy. that would have had a chance to, to, to get bought out of two teams in two consecutive years. And um, Yeah. No, he was, you know, I was talking last night to somebody about how smart Eiserman is. I, I always considered Stevie to be a... You know, Steve Eiserman is a lot like John Bellable. Mm -hmm. He's a classy, distinguished, doesn't waste a lot of time talking about himself. And I thought, I wonder how good he'll be as an executive. And he, he, is, he, he has been very, very good. I mean, he's made some decisions. that He's made some bad ones, but they're all entitled to that. But generally speaking, that team that he's got playing now is a team that is a legitimate challenger for the Eastern championship and might, uh, might in its wisdom, uh, win a Stanley Cup. But all of that, uh, I say, because you, you never know with a GM uh, what he's going to be like and what background he should have. And uh, Jay Feaster was a guy who uh, got his job in Hershey as an assistant. Uh, he was, uh, no, he was uh, working there yeah, as the assistant GM. And um, he... Uh, Jock Demers hired him in Tampa. That's how he got into Tampa. And Jay's a bright guy. He's a lawyer. I, I spent a lot of time with him in the American Hockey League. But, you know, to be a general manager with that kind of background is nice. But don't let on you're any brighter than anybody else. And 
So when he says something like that, I would have thought Jay was more intelligent than to do that. Nobody needs that, and he didn't need to say it. Uh, he had nothing to do with what has happened in Edmonton, and based on what they've done since they've gotten rid of him, he had a lot to do what, with what has happened in Calgary. And there you wonder if making a comment like that on Twitter would in any way, he's doing that without talking to the organization first. That's just his opinion, but it, in any way. Uh, but but, it, but you, you don't do that. What I'm so, saying is this, this, is, this will turn out to be a, t a spark that will come into like a forest fire at some point because... Well, the owner will be writing Winnick in, or will be texting Winnick or he'll be emailing Winnick in Tampa Bay and saying, who's this guy? Well, who does he think he is? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Jay should have thought of that. I, I'm, I'm amazed that he didn't. He's, he's far too bright to get himself in a hole like that. And they were looking at it right now. Yeah, and uh, he made the comment that uh, it's my own personal views, my own personal Twitter account. I was just having fun. I tweet about all kinds of things, including the Christmas cookies that my daughter baked last night. I, I hope he wasn't as hard on his daughter's Christmas cookies as he was you know, if, on the poor... If uh, you have to, no, if no, you no, have to explain yourself in a subsequent well, article... Hey, baby, I mean, that's... Uh, that's the uh, the, the uh, uh, comment of the uh, former play-by-play -play announcer, uh, Peter Marr. Hey, baby! <laughs> and so he insults him with that. And then just, he didn't need to do that. And then to juxtapose the insult at the front end with his daughter's cookies just about made me throw my cookies. <laughs> and again, that's, that's my, my as, as Carlin's, you put that up there right now. If you have to explain yourself why you did it, then obviously you've done something wrong. Because and you know you've done something wrong. There, there, there doesn't have to be a, a, a subsequent follow-up to, to a tweet unless the tweet, there's something wrong with it. And yeah. um, again, he, he pu he's put himself in a very awkward position and then having to explain about his daughters and the cookies. Like, you, you really... No, you, it, was, you, it was grasping for straws. He lost his fingernails. He's lucky he didn't fall. Yeah. <laughs>